kingdom in that good news. In that good news. I got a crown in that kingdom in that good news. In that good news, I'm the leader of this world. Gonna shoulder up with my cross. Gonna take it home with Jim and Jesus. In that good news, good news. I got a robe of in that kingdom in that good news. In that good news. I got a robe of in that kingdom in that good news. I'm the leader of this world. Gonna shoulder up with my cross.
this isn't something to be ashamed of. It's something to glorify God in. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. And then uh, Mark 4, 1 through 6, and also 15 through 17, this is the parable of the, of the sower and the seed here. Uh, this is Jesus. And he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto, unto them in this his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and then some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Mm -hmm. And then down in verse 15, the uh, revelation of the parable. And these are they by the wayside, where the word was sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one reason he gave us this parable is he wants us to have root. Mm -hmm. He wants us to make uh, a root for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and what is a root? Um, one, I think it can be in several forms, but uh, one one form is uh, having a relationship with God and knowing the scriptures and uh, being close to Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as well, when we're afflicted, sometimes it seems like God has left us. He's cast us off. Mm -hmm. But that is not the case in Romans Amen. 8, 35-39. Right. This quotes the text in the Second verse, but who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Mm -hmm. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all th these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. See, even through all these things, they're working out for our good. Yes. Amen. All things work out together for the good of those that love Him. Amen. Amen. Um, so, let's remember that it's for our good. Yes. And then, uh, let's remember that this world isn't our home anyway. That's right. Um, Luke 21, 16 through 18. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of ye shall they, be, shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Mm -hmm. So remember that in the persecutions... That, that just means that um, the day is closer now than it was before. Yes. Um, and Brother Mike was talking about this a couple days ago, and he brought out the point, if we love him, we should be willing to suffer for him. Um, and if you think about all the st things that Jesus has suffered for you, mm -hmm. it should be kind of obvious that we should... Um, at least suffer for him a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And um, Brother Mike had this verse too, but uh, Acts 5, 34 through 42. Uh, this was after they arrested the apostles for preaching. And it says, Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. Mm -hmm. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, who, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. 
He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Mm -hmm. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. Mm -hmm. but, it be of, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest mm -hmm. happily ye be found even to fight against God. Mm -hmm. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that, that they should not speak in, in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Amen. Amen. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. If you really think about it, it's, it's an honor to be able to suffer for Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, Amen. Before he had saved us, we couldn't do anything for him. Mm. We, were, we were an unclean altar. Yeah. But Amen. he sanctified us, and now we have the privilege... Yes. To suffer for him and to uh, work for him, Amen. it's yes. not. It's, it shouldn't be an obligation. It's it's um, something we're allowed to do. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, the last thing I have here is, um, it's good when people persecute you because that's that's a reminder that you are in the faith. Uh, beware when all speak, men speak well of you. Mm -hmm. yes. It's it's uh, um, just another marker that. You are trusting in God and that you're following Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So, we'll give this over to Dan.